Let's talk about what you do if you had some money to leave to a charity. You could have a hundred pounds, you could have a thousand euros, or a million, a million dollars. Which sort of a charity are you going to leave it to? It could be your will, for example. Where is it going to do the most good? Well, you could leave it to an art foundation, or you could leave it to preserve architecture or some wonderful building, also an incredible painting. That's the first type. The second one is you could leave it to a human children, a human charity. So, for example, saving children or something like that. Um, that's equally valid and possibly even more so. But the third one, which is underrepresented, is the wildlife charities. People tend not to think about these when they're making their wills or leaving money or handing, uh, handing over cash. Probably because they look at human life and see it as more valuable than wildlife species. What difference to it does it make to them if a squirrel or a bird becomes extinct? It's just you know, saving a Rubens is much more important, isn't it? But I look at it from another point of view, and that is that actually those species can be really important for our survival, and we might not be aware of it. Even our expert ecologists might not know how important some of these species are. There are a couple of analogies that are used to try and describe the way that people that know more about this just talk about it. So one is you're walking up the airplane steps to get on an airplane to fly to some exotic destination and you see an engineer on a ladder taking the bolts out of the wings. Would you still fly? And in that analogy, each species we lose is a bit like a bolt on the wing. We don't fully understand how those bolts support the wing and stop us falling out of the sky and all dying. Neither do we fully understand how the individual species support us and keep, it, keep us alive. The other analogy is that we are acrobats on the high trapeze in a circus and somebody comes along and starts cutting the ropes on the safety net so that if we fall, we die. And in that analogy, each individual rope or string is a species of wildlife, a fungi, a lichen, a, an insect. And we might not have any idea how those species help to keep us alive, but they might do so. Take, for example, a group of species that's very much in the news at the moment, bees for pollinating plants. Something like 70% of our food comes from plants that have flowers and need bees and other pollinators like butterflies to actually take pollen from one to another. Now, if we lose those, we suddenly lose 70% of our food, which could be very, very bad for our survival indeed. But if you look at a really good pollinator, a bumblebee, which transports quite large amounts of pollen because they are fluffy and they have a lot of ability to carry pollen from them, and some of them have very long tongues so they can get to flowers that have got deep pollen sources. Now, they, will, in many cases, like to nest in old mouse holes. So what they need is the, the mouse has dug a hole. The mouse has lined that hole with moss, so it needs the moss to be there. And it also needs the mouse or the shrew or the vole to exist and to be there. The, the other issue, of course, is what does that mouse, shrew or vole eat? And the food plants have to be there to support them. So it may be that they need the trees with nuts and berries in order to survive. It also could be that they need the, the predators like owls and eagles that eat some of the ill mice and voles and shrews to be able to survive. So actually, life is a really complicated web and rather like sitting on a safety blanket or in an aeroplane with bolts missing, if we start losing important ones, and we might not know which ones that they are until it's too late, our survival could be in severe jeopardy, which is why if you're thinking about giving money to another charity, think about the longer term, history, longer term future of the human race. And when you think about those children that you want to survive, what will they need to be able to survive beyond the war that might be affecting them or beyond whatever strife is happening in that area? And what plants and animals will they need to be able to stay alive? It's not easy to understand, but that's a very solid reason why you should give a good lump of money to the underrepresented and underfinanced wildlife charity. Thank you for listening.